The odds of you winning a game of Catan is completely predictable if you think like a poker player. And this information is gonna make you a better Catan player. And I'm gonna do it all before I roll a 12. Roll dice. Now, if you think and play like a poker player, you would know that there is only a 2.38% chance of me rolling a 12 with these two dice. Those are really low odds, and every good poker player would fold if they had a hand with those odds. Unless they could bluff like a demigod. But how would a poker player know that percentage? Well, the really good poker players have those numbers mesmerized. Memorized. Or know how to calculate them. But for the rest of us normal people that can't do that kind of math, the poker scene made a really smart move by showing us card percentages on screen during a game. This factor alone makes poker a way better spectator sport than Catan. The thrill for the viewers is knowing exactly who's winning the game, but then the still random element of the game brings surprise and delight. As a spectator, you need a really clear baseline explanation of what's going to happen. Otherwise, it's not really a surprise. It's mostly just confusion. If Catan tournaments were smart enough to implement this, their viewership would skyrocket, and it would look something like this. You would have each player listed with their current hit points, uh, victory points, <laughs> and the development cards they have, and the resources they're holding. And under each of those resources, you would have the percentage chance of them getting that resource with each dice roll. And these numbers would be updated live, as they placed each new settlement or every time the robber moved. It would be super interesting to spectators and incredibly useful for commentators to see these numbers clearly laid out. But what about the Catan players? They don't get to see these numbers and have to actually do the math for themselves. In their head. But I really doubt that many Catan players are calculating the odds. They're just happy to assume that 12 will roll enough times to justify it as their wheat income. Let's check out how that 12 roll is going. Yikes. Keep going, buddy. I believe in you. Now I bet you, the higher you go up in Catan rankings, the more likely players are calculating the odds and factoring it into their decisions. But gosh darn it, that's just too much thinking for me. So I discovered a little shortcut. You see these pips? These represent how many ways out of the total 36 possible combinations the number 4 can come up. Which as you can see, is only 3 ways. Which means that this number only has an 8.33% chance of being rolled. You can see these percentages listed here, but there is no point memorizing these numbers because they add no practical value to the game. But my little trick is gonna change that. It turns out that the average game of Catan takes about 72 turns. That is 72 dice rolls, which is an incredibly convenient number to do the simple and useful math we want to do. If we assume that a 4 will be rolled 3 times every 36 turns, then we can also assume that a 4 will be rolled 6 times every 72 turns. That means you can expect 4 6 times in an average game of Catan. Let's take a look at the game board of a Catan National Championship Tournament Finals, and let's see, based on the player's initial settlements, how many of each resource they were expecting throughout a game. Blue ultimately went on to win the game, and if you watched my video on how a champion picks their initial placements, you would know the genius behind his strategy. You would know why he picked these numbers on these resources, which is the perfect time to talk about resource synergy. If you mismatch the resources you place on, especially with your initial settlements, you're gonna find yourself severely unbalanced when it comes to spending your resources. You want to always try and get your brick and wood on a similar production number. The same goes for your ore and wheat. This way, when they roll in the equal frequency, you can spend them and actually do things in the game. Instead of risking the 16.6% .6 chance of a 7 being rolled every turn and you losing half the cards in your hand, assuming you have more than 7 cards. Another way to think about it is that you should play with the expectation of a 7 being rolled at least once every 6 turns. But if you have good resource synergy, you should be able to spend at least every other turn, which will put you out of the danger zone. Speaking of danger zone, if you find yourself with a robber on your highest production hex, then that quick math you did at the start of the game is pretty much useless. This is where investing in development cards comes in handy, and since you have a 56% chance of drawing a knight, those are really good odds that you can save your resource production. 3 resources for a development card to save 10 resources worth of production is well worth it. And as a bonus, you'll be slowing your opponent's resource production too. 
but even with this handy trick, you still might be unsure of how to place your initial settlements, which is why you should watch this video where the Catan national champion from earlier explains how you decide where to place. And if you don't watch that video, you'll still be waiting for that 12 to be rolled.